Isaac Van Meter was born in 1692 in Marbleton, New York, the son of Ons Van Meteren of Gelderland, Netherlands. By 1714, Isaac, his brother John, his mother and uncle were living on land they received in New Jersey. Isaac would marry by 1717 and go on and have seven children. Isaac was one of the four original signers to the Covenant of Pillsgrove Presbyterian Church in 1741. This is an important fact in understanding how Isaac and his family would ultimately end up relocating along the Potomac River and eventually constructing a stone fort. According to church records, Isaac was debarred from the Presbyterian Church in 1743 for getting into a heated argument and threatening physical harm to a man named Harmon. Isaac was viewed as one of the chief leading men in the congregation, in whom it was said, quote, whose profession, age, and gray hairs should have influenced him to be a Christian example to all about him, end of quote. Isaac was not cast out entirely, but only had his membership suspended. By October 1743, Isaac, who was already well acquainted with the Potomac region of Virginia through his Indian trading brother John, who in 1732 had established a colony of German immigrants in the Apecan, Virginia, just south of present-day Winchester, moved to Old Indian Fields, Virginia. Three years prior, in 1740, he had established a tomahawk claim for 405 acres along the Potomac River bottom. Prior to 1758, much of Hampshire County was sparsely populated, but the region found itself on the front line of the French and Indian War. At the time, Virginia was one of the wealthiest and most populous colonies and a leader in the push for British expansion to the West. It was because of this, a young Colonel George Washington, commander of the Virginia Regiment, commissioned a chain of forts in Hampshire County as the northern bulwark of his western line of defense. The Van Meters, already established in the region and well known to Washington, agreed to build a stone fort stockade south of their log home residence and in a strategic defensive location. Isaac was well acquainted with other well known settlers who were also constructing forts in the run up to the French and Indian War. One notable fort, Lewis Fort, was built during the same 1754 period, as well as Fort Edwards. It was Fort Edwards, a wooden stockade, that would be attacked. On April 18, 1756, Captain John Mercer 
and 16 soldiers were killed in an ambush by the French soldiers and their Indian allies. On October 5, 1757, Isaac was killed in scout by natives, only a short distance from his fort. The construction of Fort Van Meter is attributed to Nathaniel Kukendall and his son Isaac, both skilled German stonemasons. The fort itself is on the National Registry of Historic Places. It was never built as a garrison fort like Fort Pleasant or Parasol to the north. The fort served as both an operational base for the militia and scouts and as a place of refuge. No doubt the land has been detected many times over the years. Will we be lucky enough to find artifacts from the period? Stay tuned. Hello folks and welcome to this episode of the Appalachian History Detectives. I am on site and I am here with Chad. Chad's looking at, uh, what are you looking at here? That's like a grindstone, isn't it? It's like an Indian mill. Anyway, this fort was built in 1754 during the French and Indian War. Okay, the chig has arrived and we're going to get started. What we're going to do is I've got it set on Pro Zero. Iron to scrim all the way to zero right now. Two bars from the top on sensitivity. I got three bars on my battery, so we got plenty of battery. And uh, we don't have a lot of yard here to detect. So there's three of us, not a lot of yard here to detect. Um, but we'll be back. Once this hay is mowed down, we're going to come back and, and, and do a better job. But uh, we wanted to try this out. It has been detected before. We're not the first to be here. Did they leave anything behind? We're going to find out. And you guys are going to be with us. Beautiful day. We're going to have a great time. We're going to have fun no matter what. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And we'll see you here on our first find. Okay, I'm here by the barn. I got a good hit right here. 75 to 83. Could be big iron, but we're going to dig that right there. Okay. Let's see what we have. Oh, I think that's it right there. Piece of aluminum. I'm going to point, point out some architectural features of this fort. First of all, I'm going to show you, I don't know if you guys can pick it up, but the fort, you can see the, it's not even, it's not even straight across there. The, the walls, the walls camber down, they camber out. It also cambers this way, and you can see the doorway, the doorway actually sticks out further on one side than the other. You want to see these gun holes here. This is a gun hole musket for muskets and up there. Now the, the men would be up here shooting and the women and the children would be down here shooting. And uh, the reason they put these down low is because if an Indian came running across here and made it past the, the top portals of the gunfire and they crouched up against against this okay you see they, they they're out of the line of fire right now and they could bust into that door but when you have lower gun portals like this they can't do that so you can see the gun portals up there and you can see the gun portals there but now looky here look how this wall is bowed can you see how it's bowed in it's bowed in. Now, I don't know if it was purposely done that way. And uh, also, you can see how it's, it's bowed out. So, it's bowed in and bowed out. And you can see how the foundation sits out further than the wall does. And you can also see how there's moss growing on here. And that's because this part of the, of the structure gets a lot of moisture and a lot of the rainfall. And you can see on this side... They also had the gun portals to shoot out of. Now there was one here. There was one originally here. It looks like it got uh, mortared in. 
And uh, same thing here. You got four gun holes here. There was one here. It's got mortared in. Here's one and here's one. My guess is there was one right here. And uh, this rock here, this stone, was a replacement for one that fell out. All of this has been detected before. That's never deterred the chig. This is the home. The walls of this structure are very, very thick. Anywhere from 16 inches to two foot thick. Something down here. Is it that? Is that? Let's see. We're still down here. Gotta dig a little deeper though. That might be it right there. That is a piece of copper or tin. But it is not, there's no ferrous metal in it because there's no rust on it. Just not sure what it's for yet. But I, I think it could be maybe just an old piece of copper flashing. Now, uh, Chad and I were just talking. There's a lot of traffic on the highway up here. A lot of trucks with kayaks and boats. Uh, the river here is real popular river rafting. The valley here is full of campgrounds. And uh, there's an area here nearby. It's called the trough. And the trough has... You know, it has an excursion train that goes through it, and it's an area that's virtually inaccessible by anything other than the trainer kayaks and boats. And uh, there are nesting eagles down there. And a lot of people will go down through there to look at those eagles. Uh, of course, from a distance, from the train cars or from their boats. Um, but uh, the river here, the river's right behind me, very, very popular. And uh, it's a hot day today, so... You know, we may be checking that river out before the day's over. All right, I just pulled this out of the ground. And I'm not sure what it is, but it is. It is copper or brass. And it's got a little bit of fancy on there. And I don't know. Hmm. Mm hmm. Tabs. Could it be the top of a, I don't know. It's, it's got a piece of floral design there. Now I'd say it's a top of a can of some sort. And, uh, but it's not aluminum. It's actually copper. I don't know if you can see it right there on the edge. We're going to keep going, but it, it is, it definitely has copper in it. All right, I just pulled this out of this hole, and it's a kettle pot piece. I don't know. Is it from John Van Meter's time period? I don't know. Let's keep going. I want to show you this log. This is one solid log. This is about... 30 inches across that was carved into a watering trough or a canoe. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? That's huge. This is about 12 to 13 feet long. And it's about, uh, I'd say it's about 30 inches square at least. I thought this was interesting. I wonder how old this is. It is, tea, it's teacup. Look how thin that is. You know, when I see China that thin, that speaks to me of old. You'll find a lot of old China that's very, very thin. Very delicate, dainty. And uh, let me see if there's anything else down in here before we roll it out. Yep, make sure it's on. Yep. Okay, so that was it right there. Let's keep moving. It was right underneath that root. Right there it is. There it is. There it is. 
I think it's probably okay. Now this is interesting. It's out shaped. See that? It's part of a hoe. I think maybe an ads. Probably connected on up here. And I think that's probably an old ads. And uh, right there's the house. There's Chad digging there. The chig is around the house that way. So they could have they could have had a little garden right in here. And uh, we just found a hoe to it. Let's keep going. Okay, I got a hit in here. And it's pretty high. What is this? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Okay, here it is. And it's got a couple holes there. It's brass, it's heavy. And uh, it could have gone on a wagon. A little wagon, maybe. A wagon, some sort. But it's, it's beautiful. Look at that. I mean, just the shine and the patina on that. I mean, that's just a gorgeous piece. Just a beautiful piece of metal right there. It was reading 89, solid 89 on my detector. And he said that was a brass bushing that I found. I had him take a look at it. I wanted to know what it was. He said it was a, it was a bushing, a brass bushing. So now you know. And, uh, but man, it was a gorgeous piece, wasn't it? I just love that color. Let's keep going. I thought I would show you guys these black locust trees. I've never seen black locust trees this big around. Black locust is a very hardy tree. It is, um, it is resistance to termites and rot, believe it or not. A lot of the old timers over here in the mountains use locusts as fence posts. This one here, I mean, this one here is about, it's about 28 to 30 inches in diameter. And uh, that one every bit is as well. Okay. What do we have here? It's brass. What it is. That oh, looks like a piece of that thing I just found a while ago. Let me clean this up. It's brass. It looks like a, a fitting of some sort. It's old. There's no doubt in my mind this is old. But uh, let me clean this up a little bit. I'll bring you guys back. Okay, this is the best I could clean it. I don't think it is a pipe fitting. I don't know what it goes to. It's brass though. Can you see that? Can you see how that is? You see that profile? Because over a pipe, I do know that. It's heavy. And there's a green patina in that. <laughs> <laughs> what you got? Yeah. How did we all miss that? Yeah, it's got some, uh, it's, uh, painted I mean it's got some black um, you know some paint on there clean that up and uh, boy it's a small one isn't it so it has some writing on it oh, on the back mm -hmm. first button you could have a design trouble guilt or yeah trouble, trouble guilt, trouble guilt. number number two on it right, let it go Ooh. what else you got you got some other goodies just those uh, like tack things that we. Oh, you found some tack right things. Found oh, two huh. of those and I've seen something like that. Okay, I found this right here in this hole, and I didn't film the dig because as soon as I dug into it, I saw it was iron. But it's really heavy, and I d took this up to the aqua chigger. And he said this is a piece of a cannon axle. And here's the interesting part. It's, it's hand forged. You can see this. See how thick this is? 
and look how thin that is and this is looks like it's been bored through here and it's uneven it's an uneven piece so the other parts missing of course this is where it rode and it just probably just wore it out but uh, that's what that is okay I just I just popped the plug it looks like an old hinge here let's see here but it's got round nails you see the round nails so it tells me it's not very old let me pull this out without pulling it out here there we go see that old hinge now it doesn't have square nails in it so this is post 18, post 1880s. Okay. Yep. This is a hydraulics from farm tractor, I think. Like a 1940s to 1950s farm tractor is what that is. Um, could be wrong though. I've never seen anything quite like that. Okay, I'm here with the Aqua Chigger. We're gonna call it the day. We have some other things to do, or he does. So, uh, I got Chad. Chad's putting everything out there by my stuff. And uh, I wanted to go ahead and do a wrap up here. Let's see what Mr. Bo Aqua Chigger found. What you got, Well, Bo? this is the uh, my find that I'm most interested in. I think it's kind of the neatest thing. Oh, wow. At least a lid to something, but I'm not 100% on it. Like a locket. Man. So, like a hinge on it? Yep. Yep. I would agree. Yeah, and it's a little heavy. And That's then cool. I found a band and a gun piece and a gun piece. Some Merry Widows. Merry Widows, uh-oh. Some pennies, but not very old. Bits and pieces. But uh, that's probably my most interesting right there. Some coins. Lots of pieces of the roof. You know, the, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I found a lot of that, see. too. Yeah. Oh, um, man. You found West Virginia. Is it? Did you find West Virginia? Mm, one cent. You nice. found West Virginia right there. All right. What's this go to? Do you know? Yeah, I think it's plastic, actually. Oh, no, it is. No, no, no. It's like, man, that feels awfully yeah. weird. <laughs> That's kind of different right there, too. But I thought it was a little buckle, but it's too thin. Too much of anything. Yeah, it's brassy. But that rang high. It's a ring high. Yeah, it rang pretty good, yeah. Yeah, and this is definitely a lid to something. Maybe mm -hmm. a back of a watch, you think? Mm -hmm. It's pretty patina. Oh, no, that's old. That looks old. So I don't... A couple pieces of red uh, terracotta. That's probably the most interesting. Did you have fun? Oh, yeah, yeah. Did it was fun? great. It did. It had a good time. Um, it's neat being able to not only take a place like this with this much history. Yep. I mean, yeah, it is. How often do you get to do that? A lot of it is. Right here was walking on the ground that the... Colonials and pioneers walked on several wow. years ago. Yeah, Wild wow, Indians coming down through here. Yep. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? Thanks for bringing yeah. us out. Yeah. I'm going to yep. pack my stuff up and hit the road. We'll go over there and do a wrap up on what I have and what Chad found. And okay, looks like Chadwick. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder what that is. It's heavy. Chad. Is the only one to find a button, and he found one button right there. You guys already saw it. These, I believe, went to curtains, tied the tie backs for curtains, decorative curtains. I could be wrong. You guys know what this is. You can tell me. Looks like he found five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven cents. This is all clad, modern clad. Terracotta rings. All right, some garbage and some trash. Okay, over here, mine. I didn't uh, show this dig. Bone, I didn't know what that was, neither did Chad. I thought it was part of a mason jar lid, but it's not. It's corrugated. 
This is copper. You can see the patina on there. See the copper patina? And it actually has a design in there. You see that design? It's pretty. But I don't know what it went to. And then I believe this is a copper roofing. Didn't show this dig. I'm not sure what that is. It's heavy. It actually might be a spring. I just need to clean it up. You guys saw this. You probably didn't see this dig. My find of the day is probably that nice, beautiful green patina, brassy piece right there. Didn't find a lot, but we had fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the story and the fort here. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next episode.